Can you imagine a world without stories? Stories give shape to our experience. They're what make us human, illuminating meaning and power in our complex and mysterious lives. What would we lose in the lack of narrative? Our identities? Our histories? Our ability to relate to one another? Stories are essential to our relationships and our sense of place. And it is of great value to pay attention to the way we tell them. Hi everyone, this is Mark. And this is Oliver. And we're here to present a class we'll be teaching next block, next block, right? Mm -hmm. On audio documentaries. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of what we'll be up to, so here's a clip from a program called This American Life on NPR. Yep, here it is. There's this bridge that's part of Chicago's Lakeshore Drive. It crosses the Chicago River. You can see this bridge from the offices at WBEZ. It's really close. But unless you're really looking for it, you would miss the hole that is halfway across the bridge. It's at the foot of some steel girders in between lanes of traffic, just 12 inches by 36. I'd cross, I'd cross the two lanes, and then, and then I'd go to where the hole is, and when there was no cars coming at the time, I'd slip in. Richard Dorsey became momentarily famous in Chicago in December 2004 when police learned from one of Richard's friends that Richard and this friend had been living down there, inside the frame of the bridge, tucked away in the rafters underneath the roadway, for years. Authorities kicked him out from this space that Richard says was probably 14 or 18 feet long and about as wide as two lanes of traffic, with the steel frame of the bridge for walls and a concrete floor, the ceiling was the roadway, where out of wood that Richard and his friend mostly took from a construction site, they built three rooms in the dank space, a supply room and two bedrooms. There was electricity from a long extension cord that they hid with piping and plugged into a regular electric socket in the bridge down below. They made a big, big stink out of this when uh, actually it hit the papers. I had um, like a 20-inch TV, mm -hmm. which was a pain in the butt to get in, but I, I did it. And I had a little heater and... Various other things like a PlayStation, video games, videotapes, VHS. And I'd come back towards the evening and sit back and play the PlayStation and, you know, maybe have some beer, drink some beer and see how far I can go in a driving game before I end up crashing. But this wasn't just an adult treehouse hidden away inside an old bridge. It was an adult treehouse inside an old drawbridge, a working drawbridge over the Chicago River that every now and then would raise turning the entire three-room apartment on its side, pulling the extension cord out of the outlet. The only thing that was actually a little on the scary side was the first time the bridge went up. Everything would tilt. Literally. It would be like a one-sided earthquake. And instead of it shaking, it would be like the ground just lifting up and tilting. And then when that bridge is vertical, that bridge really is, like, vertical. You're standing straight up in the laying down position. Some of his stuff was bungee corded down. The heavy stuff like the TV he kept against the back wall of his room, the wall that tilted to become the floor. And sometimes I'd move things just before the bridge went up because you can hear the motors unlock. And there's a bell on that bridge. Yeah, there's, there's bells. So the bells go off, you hear the motors start. I just, I just sit back and ride it. And I just lay there and then as the bridge went up, I slowly slid towards the wall and then when it was totally standing straight up, then uh, I'd be standing straight up on that back wall. With the mattress next to you? Yes. And after that first time, it was kind of like a, like a rush going down a hill on a roller coaster, you know, where you get that, that laugh and, you, you know, you feel all relieved and it's real great, you know. Richard's been out of there since 2004. He lives with friends in a house now in the suburbs. And when he talks about his little nest in the bridge today, he is surprisingly unsentimental. It was hot as hell in the summer, he says, and freezing in the winter. And the ceiling was just low enough, five feet and change, that he used to hit his head. But as we talked about it, there was also this. Richard, if, if your friend hadn't turned you into the cops... Would I still be there? Is that the question? Yeah. Probably. Probably. To me, it's a world of safety and comfort. Where to someone else, they see it. Oh, another drug bridge. What would you do?
Our class will be devoted to the exploration of collecting and narrating stories. And where better to collect these stories than within our own community, the Open School. We will explore different methods of storytelling and story collecting, then apply what we learn to the production of an audio documentary. Each student will be responsible for collecting and producing their own short audio documentary. And each of these shorts will be used in a compilation of an extended one. In the emergence of a decentralized new media, there is greater access to the tools needed to participate in broadcasting. There could not be a better time than now to share our stories about the Open School. Our stories illustrate the value of our wonderfully unique learning center more than any statistic could ever. So if you feel up to becoming a part of a team driven to collect and tell the stories of our community, we would love to have you. It is our intent to use these stories as a tool to preserve this magical school we so luckily are a part of. Well, we hope you join us next block. And the spaces available are limited, so please talk to us before registration if you're interested. Thanks. See you soon.